Hello everyone, lovely humans of the internet. As you know, or if you are new here, um, my name is Taylor Gonzaga and I am the founder and artistic director of Opera Cecilia. Please feel free to like and subscribe to this channel if you are enjoying the artistic director reacts videos. All of the support means so much to us. I've done one opera diva from the past, Maria Callas, and then I have done an opera diva that's currently still in the game, Cecilia Bartoli, and now I'll be doing another even more current opera diva, Lisette Oropesa. Um, this is an absolutely, this remarkable woman <laughs> is extremely talented, extremely gifted artist. She won the Met competition and kind of got her start um, with the Met competition at a young age. She has um, been performing with some of the leading opera houses in the world. She's one of the most in-demand lyric coloratura sopranos today, and she's definitely a role model and somebody that I massively look up to in the industry as an aspiring opera singer myself. So I could not have a YouTube channel that centers around reacting to classical and contemporary music without also getting the chance to react to her. Today we will actually be watching um, her perform a, a rendition of the aria Sempre Libera from La Traviata by Giuseppe Verdi. This is um, one of my favorite operas. It is a favorite opera in the standard repertoire among many singers and opera lovers alike. Um, it is very, very famous. It has some of the most famous operatic tunes that have also been used in mainstream cinema. Um, everything from TV commercials to movies to all sorts of stuff. The Brindisi, the dun da, dun dun da, dun dun da, da da da, is everywhere. So this is definitely a work that's made its way to a certain extent into the mainstream. But before we um, look a little bit more into La Traviata, I wanted to read a little bit about our wonderful soprano here from her own website. Um, so it um, says on here that Lisette Oropesa is one of the most in-demand lyric coloratorists today, as I said earlier. She performs leading roles regularly at some of the most important or large-scale opera houses in the world. Um, this is including but not limited to the Metropolitan Opera, um, the Teatro alla Scala, the Wiener Staatsoper, the, ba the Bayerische Staatsoper, um, the Paris Opera, Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, like, I think one of the things that I love the most about her is how, like, articulately wonderful of an educator and a teacher she also is. She often facilitates master classes. She did an online master class series that I also, that I actually got the chance to kind of attend as a spectator a few different times during, like, the worst part of the pandemic in 2020. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about our soprano, um, I did want to get into La Traviata just a little bit. According to the Met website in Act 1, Violetta Valerie knows that she will die soon. So um, the whole entire um, plot sort of centers around the fact that I believe it's tuberculosis that she has, um, but she is she's terminally ill, essentially. Um, at a party, she is a high-class courtesan. At a party, she meets Alfredo, who is sort of her main love interest in the opera, um, who's been fascinated by her for a long time, and rumor has it that he's been um, inquiring after her health as well every day, which is very interesting. Um, the guests are amused by the seemingly naive and emotional attitude toward her, and they ask Alfredo to propose a toast, and he celebrates true love, and Violetta responds in praise of free love. They have very different philosophies on love from the from the very beginning, but um, she's touched by his manner and his honesty, and Suddenly she feels faint and the guests withdraw from the party and only Alfredo remains behind and he declares his love for her, but there's no place for such feelings in her life. Not only is she terminally ill, but she is a courtesan. She comes from a very different kind of completely different life than he does in his current class status. So there's a lot of the clashing of the classes going on in this opera. This, this opera is kind of killer for the soprano because a lot of really demanding music happens kind of right out the gate. And you don't really get to warm up into the role during the course of the night. You just kind of got to be ready to go. There's an awesome synopsis on the Met website if you're interested in reading the whole thing. Um, but basically at the end, it's tragic because Violetta does end up dying of her disease. And um, 
her and Alfredo's relationship during the course of the whole show is fraught with so much conflict that they don't just to just get to experience the joy of that love together, which is quite sad. This is an out of context performance. This was performed for a charity concert, it looks like, with full orchestra. And I just really enjoy this performance of hers. So now that we know a little bit more about Lisette Oropesa and we know a little bit more about the opera, let's dive into the video. Oh, and then the wonderful tenor comes in. Um, I guess we have an Alfredo in this performance as well. I totally forgot that that happened. That's awesome. Okay, so I just wanted to comment a little bit about the first part of this aria. So as you notice by the tempo, we go right into it. Like this aria is a marathon right from the very beginning. And that is one of the reasons why it's difficult to sing. And also just by experimenting with bits and pieces of this um, aria for fun at home, because this is repertoire I hope to be able to sing someday in a public setting. Um, I have come to find that it's very, very easy to get caught up in the accompaniment too and the excitement of all of it and to forget, oh, I have to stay grounded because there's a lot more to come. And what I love about Lisette, every single time that I see her on stage, she looks so confident and so in character right from the beginning. And I've said this in previous videos about other opera divas that I have discussed on this channel, but that is the mark of a professional performer when you are in character right from the start, when you are immediately emotionally engaged, even if the orchestra starts before you start singing, even if you have a lead in, which is extra important in classical music, because oftentimes you will, and you are playing a very, very defined character. So that was something I just sort of noticed right off the bat. She immediately has this extremely infectious energy and she's immediately magnetic on stage because she is so in tune with this character. She's played this character many, many, many times in the context of the full production. So at this point, she's quite familiar with the way that it feels to be Violetta and to live in Violetta's world and you can tell in this performance. There's a lot of musicality right from the start which is one of my favorite things about her. Do I wish maybe that breath at the beginning was a little bit less audible or a little bit more grounded? Yeah but like it's also expressive and I think there's something to say about the fact that like you can use the silences in between phrases to make your point in a piece just as you can, just as much as the music itself. Nice tenor. Oh, <laughs> 
So that's the coloratura part of this aria. <laughs> that's a very, very um, vocally acrobatic line to sing. So I just wanted to stop and comment on that. Also, what a lovely tenor voice. That was a wonderful tenor little debut that he made in the aria because there is a response from Alfredo in this piece. That tenor looks so much younger than his voice. And I really don't mean that disrespectfully. I just was not expecting when they zeroed in on his face, I was like, you look so young. Um, but good for him um, if he is truly that young. And um, honestly, he sounds fantastic. So that's not a diss at all. That was just an observation that I made. Um, also, what one of the wonderful things that is happening here is in an aria like this, that's kind of like a marathon, you sort of have to lean into the roller coaster a little bit. And you have to allow yourself to really like evenly ride on your breath. And that means having an even flow of air underneath all of your phrases and allowing your air to be relaxed and buoyant and your body to not tense up too much. And that is something that I've had issues with with coloratura in the past. It's loosened up a lot more as my training has progressed and as time goes on. But that's something that I watch a lot in other performers. And Lisette always has a buoyancy to herself when she's on stage. It always feels like even if there was a shallower breath at the beginning of this aria right now, it feels like everything is automatically set a little bit lower once again in the support mechanism. And she has the center of gravity that is very stable and grounded, but is not stable and grounded in a stiff way. She is moving with the music, she's swaying with the music, and not only does that come across as much more musical and dramatically engaged, but that actually serves a technical purpose for the singer too, because I, I tell a lot of my students in voice lessons, you, there's a difference between being flexed and being engaged. There's a difference between um, supporting your mechanism well and trying to muscle through the sound. And I don't always word it exactly like that because there are muscle systems at work here and it's important for them to utilize those. But I think it's really, really important for singers to realize that there's like a relaxed buoyancy to proper engagement when singing and it's not a stiffening or a huh, I have to get ready for the for I don't know going on a hunt or something <laughs> um yeah and I that's something I just really admire about her is that combination of that buoyant engagement with that stability and that's something that I have had to work very hard on in my own career my very young career thus far I am a I am a very, very small hatchling in the opera world compared to Lisette, um, but I greatly admire her for that. And it's wonderful to have role models like that in the industry right now. You can tell that she's a performer that you trust on stage. And that's one of the reasons that she is so high in demand. wonderful. <laughs> she's just so cool. She's so cool. Um, she's such a, a, 
for lack of better terms, badass in the opera world right now. So Lisette, if you ever see this, um, thank you for blessing us with your artistry and your impeccable example of being an, a riveting and engaging performer on stage. Um, technique wise, what was happening there was just a wonderful demonstration of agile singing. Uh, this is once again, you can see it's you're sort of riding a roller coaster in this aria and there's this sense that the soprano sort of has to have of just riding the roller coaster, like going with it and not working against it, allowing your body to sort of flow with it, your air to sort of flow with it. And this is something that she's so good at doing. She's so good at riding this wave and embracing the wave and not trying to counteract it or work against it because she's afraid or apologizing for anything. She always goes up on stage blatantly unapologetic. And so does Cecilia Bartoli and so did Maria Callas and all of these other greats in the opera world. So that is the sign of a performer that just owns herself and owns who she is and knows that she has something unique to bring to the table. Um, what is also very, very interesting um, about her specific interpretation is her use of dynamics. And dynamics are very important in Verdi arias in particular because there's a lot of push and pull with the music. Um, and here you can see it in kind of her the higher pitch arcs of her coloratura. Um, she's adding phrase arcs to every single one. Everything is sung on a dynamic. And in um, uh, in really, really good singing, especially in romance or repertoire, everything should be sung on dynamics because we were not we were not meant to sing static. We were not meant to sing on just one dynamic all the time. Our voice was meant to be a push and pull. And not only is that inherently more musical for the audience, but that is also extremely helpful for maintaining an even and relaxed flow of air underneath your tone and for having nice balanced onsets. Because if you don't have those dynamic contrasts, it can be really, really easy to stiffen up, to cause tension in the body, to cause tension in the tone. And um, that happens a lot with young artists. That happened a lot with me at the very beginning of the game because I was holding back and I was scrutinizing what I was hearing when I was singing. And now as I'm getting older, I'm starting to rely more on the feeling of singing versus what I might hear with my own ears when I sing. And she is singing as a full body experience in a very highly stimulating environment and a very exciting and thrilling aria in standard operatic repertoire. So overall, Lisette Oropesa, we love you at Opera Cecilia. We all look up to you as emerging artists in this field that are aspiring to do um, do some of the things that you are doing in your career right now. So it is just so cool to have the opportunity to see you and thank you so much, not only for your incredible artistry and gifted vocalism, but also for your ability to articulate this art form so well and explain this art form so well and everything that you are doing to reach out to emerging artists and help educate emerging artists in this art form in the process and make opera more accessible for future generations. For my Aurora fans out there, there will be another Aurora video and we'll be adding to that series and actually analyzing a music video of Aurora's next week. And it's gonna have all of this really, really fun nerdy symbolism in it. So I am super, super excited to flesh all of that out with you. We will also have more classical music reactions to come and some other contemporary artists that I haven't reacted yet to on this channel that I'm super excited to introduce my perspective on to you all. So just thank you so much for your continued support. This channel is growing more and more every day and I could not be more appreciative and more excited about that. This is an aspect of my artistry that is such a dream come true to get to do with all of y'all on camera. <laughs> and um, we also have a lot of other um, content besides the uh, Artistic Director React series or outside of that particular series of videos we're doing right now that will be coming your way on the OC YouTube channel in the coming months. If you have any recommendations of classical or contemporary music, please feel free to put them in the comment section of this video. I have a lot of recommendations already to sift through, but I am always welcoming of more because it just gives me endless amounts of material to get to appreciate as a listener and endless amount of artists to get to look up to as I continue to develop my own young artistic career. I hope you all have wonderful nights. So see you next time on the OC YouTube channel and Bye.